Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision video. Now guys, we are now in March. Welcome to yet another new month. And for those of you who are in year 11, what this means is you officially now have two months left before GCSE exam season begins, okay? Officially, bear in mind that the official dates for your GCSEs, your GCSEs begin on the 9th of March and GCSEs for this year end on the 21st of June. So therefore, the start of this new month should indicate to those of you in year 11 that you have two full months left before your final GCSEs and then from May, it's all systems go, okay? You literally have all of your GCSEs that you're gonna be sitting, especially if you're currently in the class of 2024. Now guys, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you are starting to feel the pressure a little bit, okay? You probably have your last round of mocks coming up. You have all of these things that you need to catch up on and it probably feels like time is running against you. So guys, what I want to suggest is these are my three top tips and my top suggestions on how you can maximize the final two months that you've got left before your GCSE exams. And more specifically, these are my three top suggestions on how you can ensure you do amazingly well when it comes to your English language as well as your English literature GCSEs. This is the best way you can maximize in the time that you have left. So guys, let's begin with my first suggestion and this applies to the language paper one and paper two exams. Now, when it comes to language paper one and paper two exams, you always, well, at least at this stage, you should know that, of course, with language paper one, you're given one text that you've never seen before. It's a fiction text. And of course, paper two, you're given two inserts, the non-fiction. Again, you've never seen them before. And what this is testing is your inference skills, especially for section A, right? Questions one to four. It tests your inference skills. It tests your ability to understand two texts you've never seen before and write perceptively and be able to pick really, really good quotations and so on. The best way to ensure that when you're walking into your language paper one and paper two exams is what you should try and do going forward, especially in March and April when you are practicing and preparing for this part of your English GCSEs is try your best to find only 19th century texts and practice only using old texts. And I'll explain why. When it comes to 19th century texts and what that means is basically like Victorian texts, texts that are written long time ago, right? 19th century texts and these old style of texts tend to be a little bit more challenging to understand what's going on. It's also quite challenging to kind of infer, okay, based on what the author is writing in this fiction um, 19th century text or in this non-fiction 19th century text, it's a little bit hard. There's some new words I don't understand. And of course, what that does is it really tests your ability to be able to correctly infer and to work with the limited information that you've got. However, the reason why I really strongly recommend practicing with only Victorian texts and only fairly challenging texts is because the more you kind of get used to practicing with texts that you don't feel really fully confident with, fully comfortable with is number one, what that does is it makes anything that's newer and anything that's more modern super easy. It makes the modern texts that you get seem like light work. But also what that means is when you do inevitably get presented with a Victorian text, that's inevitable, that's unavoidable in text two. But also if you get a fairly challenging uh, fiction text in your um, paper one, you've literally practiced how to respond to texts that are a little bit hard to understand, okay? So my top suggestion and a great way to ensure that when you're going into your final language paper one and paper two exams, especially for section A, is now what you should be doing in the last two months to your final exams, get as many papers online, get as many extracts and texts that are written in older English, okay? Don't go beyond Victorian times, okay? So this is kind of like the 18 to 1900s. Don't do like loads of Shakespeare ones unless you're obviously preparing for literature. Find old Victorian texts and use those to practice section eight in language paper one and paper two. Because what that means is if you get anything easier in your final actual GCSE, it literally feels like light work. That's suggestion number one. Now, when it comes to your literature exams, okay, because remember, obviously, you're also going to have literature paper one and paper two exams. What is the best approach to practice and how should you maximize your time when you're practicing from literature paper one and paper two? This is my suggestion. When it comes to literature paper one and paper two, the first thing you must stop doing if you're still doing it is stop reading books and poems. In other words, I know that sometimes it's really tempting, you know, say for example, you're preparing for Macbeth or Christmas Carol or Jekyll and Hyde, whatever. And then you think, 
okay, I literally don't have that much time. I just want to make sure that I know exactly what happens in every single scene, in every single chapter, and then it feels really tempting to then just reread it. Don't do that because you are wasting time rereading poems, rereading books, when really what you should be doing instead is actually answering and practicing past papers, okay? So stop reading books and poems, put those to the side. Instead, what you should do is number one, finalize your quotations. Get the quotes that you need for your literature paper one exams. Get the quotes that you need for your literature paper two exams. Get the context information, put them all in flashcards and then literally start applying that to past paper questions. And then the third thing that you should do in the final two months that you've got left before your final GCSE exams is, of course, revise. But there's a specific method and a technique to do so, okay? Lots of you guys are probably not spending enough time actually revising. You're not giving yourself enough time each week to get better in English. Remember, English isn't like maths and science, right? Maths and science is a right and wrong answer. All you just need to do is memorize that right or wrong answer. English, of course, you need to know your text and so on, but also your English UCSEs are a test of your reading speed and your writing speed. That cannot be done in last minute cramming sessions. It's more so like sports, right? Sports, you increase and improve over time. English is the same. Your speed reading and your speed writing can only improve if you give it enough time over a longer period of time. What that therefore means is, in March, you should be spending and investing a minimum of two hours in your revision. And in April, that needs to go up to three hours a week, not a month, a week, okay? So for the coming month, try and increase your study time to two hours when it comes to English per week. And of course, in April, the final month before your GCSEs kick off, take that up to three hours. Now, of course, for the students in my masterclass, I always tell them, guys, use this one hour that we spend in our GCSE masterclass as revision time, okay? So that counts towards revision, but what you also need to do is invest an additional extra hour into your self-study. So of course, if you guys have any form of tuition, that counts. However, you still need to set aside time to apply what you have learned, okay? So guys, as I said, exams kick off from the 9th of May. Therefore, what that means is you literally have two months left before your final GCSEs if you're currently in year 11. So make sure you start really taking this time that you have left seriously, set out some kind of schedule and then practice language paper one in the way that I've suggested, as well as literature paper one and paper two in a similar way to what I've suggested. So I hope that helps and maybe also eases up the pressure when it comes to preparing for your English GCSEs.